Hello, Harvey Olivia with Carrington College Clinical Instructor, here with the respiratory guy on the video cameras. Thank you, Mr. Respiratory Guy, Mr. Houston. Uh, today we're going to do our competency for humidity and aerosol therapy. So, like anything we do, we have to verify physician's orders. So make sure you have a physician's order for this. After you check that, make sure you check the patient's chart. And then, of course, before you enter the room, you're going to uh, put your proper PPE on. So whatever type of PPE you may need, that's what you should have on. So currently, I'm not going to put PPE on just for demonstration purposes, but typically I would be wearing gloves, gown, whatever is necessary. Okay, so make sure you've got your equipment that you're going to need. So for this all, I've already removed the cap, but this should have a cap. Uh, you're going to take the cap off on the side of this. You're going to have a chart that tells you what liter flow per minute to get the FiO2 that you're going to want. So for instance, 6 liters of flow off of your flow meter will give you 28%. Okay. Also, you have a dial here. So this coincides with your chart. So you would turn it to 6 liters. I mean, you would turn this to 28%. And then you would turn your flow meter to six liters to get that 28%. And if you'll notice, this is the Venturi principle. So as you change the numbers, you will see the opening either go bigger or smaller. So we're going to go to 28%. This is the cap that you're going to screw into the flow meter. This metal part here is what we would use for what's called a donut. So that will provide heated humidity. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all the parts. You're going to need a mask. So an aerosol mask. You can also use this piece or trait collar as well. So you will need a drain bag. So this will drain the condensation into here. And you're going to need to angle it at a good um, angle. So you tilt it sideways. You want it low enough and where the tubing can kind of go into here and out to the patient so that all your condensation collects in the bag. From time to time, this bag will fill up and you will need to drain it. So there are a few ways that you can drain it. If you have a suction catheter, sometimes I'll take the tubing and lift this up a little bit and place the tubing on here and it'll suck all of the water out of there. Or you can drain this into a trash receptacle. Sometimes I take a, a glove and I'll drain it into a glove and toss that out. But you will need to drain this. Also, you want to clip it to the bed where it's not pulling on the patient because this does get heavy especially a trach patient you wouldn't want that tubing and everything weight to be pulling on the patient okay so this is your tubing and i have the bag already in there just to show you but i'm going to take it apart so this tubing usually comes on a big roll that the hospital buys you will need to cut scissors to cut these rolls with scissors at the proper length the way that i gauge it is i just grab enough that I can feel is gonna be long enough. And any adjustments that I might need to make, I can make at the bedside when I'm actually going to put it on the patients. So if I felt like my tubing was a little bit too long, I could cut it in sections. And you wanna make sure you cut in the middle section. There's like a little raised um, part here. That's where you wanna cut it. So every section should have that. And that's where you'd cut it. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I have it already ready. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the flow meter. So this is plastic, and you don't want to force anything. Anything you force, you will strip the threads. So when you place this on, it should be an easy fit. And if it's not going on right away, you want to just kind of let it catch or do its thing. If you see that it's giving you a little bit of trouble, sometimes you can take the flow meter off and do it. Um, sometimes you may need to get a new one because it may be stripped. So I'm going to go ahead and place this on here. And I'm trying to do it to where it doesn't catch or cause any kind of resistance because I don't want to break this. So this is the way it's going to look without the donut. If I place the donut on there, just be mindful it does get hot. So you would place the donut first and then you would put it in. So I already put this on, but if I was going to do it, I would put this on here first and then put this on, okay? Um, the heated humidity is more effective for the patient. They will get better humidity uh, with it being heated. So now you're gonna take your bottle and we're pretending this is a full bottle. And then now you want to twist this in here. So when you do this, be mindful of how much water you have. 
Um, you should always start with a full bottle and always have extra in the room. But once you see the bottle getting down to about one quarter or even less, uh, you should change it out. When you change it out, it's always good practice to change the whole thing. These usually come in kits. The kit has all these parts with it. Just change everything out when you throw it out. Okay, so now that we have that hooked up, we're going to take our tubing. Okay, this is in here. I haven't turned anything on yet because I'm just showing a uh, demonstration. So I have my bag with the little part that clips. This is going to be so that you can attach this to somewhere. Um, it can be on the bed, it can be on some part of the frame, it, sometimes on the rail. Just be mindful though, because when they move the patient, you don't want it to tilt, spill, and you want it still at the angle. Um, so just for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to have it too long. I just want to show you. So this is going to go here. So you would want this tubing to go at such an angle where it would drain right into the bag. And then you'll see the humidity coming out of here. You should see aerosol coming out if it's running appropriately. This can go to a tray collar. If it's going to go to a tray collar, you would put the tray collar here, attach it to the patient. A T piece would also be the same way. You would attach it to the T piece. For demonstration, we're going to use an aerosol mask. Mr. Smith, I'm just going to put this mask on for you. And normally we would have the tubing set up where it's not in the patient's way, where the patient has a little bit of slack and the patient is comfortable. So just make sure that your mask adjustments are good, that it's fitting the patient properly. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so we can demonstrate six liters. So we are running at six liters. You can hear the noise, you can hear the bubbling, you can hear the water movement. So if you do not have this set up correctly, and one of the things that will happen is water will occlude in your tubing. And it will actually occlude so much that no longer is the patient receiving oxygen because this is just full of water. You'll hear a noise, you'll see it sloshing back and forth. So try to avoid all those things. When you come in and assess your patient to do this, make sure that you're checking everything to see that it's still properly uh, placed on the patient. And if the patient's been moved, that when they moved it, they did um, be mindful of the position of that. So Mr. Smith, we have you on uh, aerosol. We're doing six liters and 28%. Um, you're going to have to wear this mask just to get your uh, humidity and aerosol. Uh, if there's anything you'd like for me to do, please let me know and I'll go ahead and do it for you. If you need any adjustments or anything, I'll, feel, I'll be happy to make those for you. Uh, once we do everything, we dispose of all of our garbage. Leave the patient's area always clean and nice. I'm gonna wash my hands again, and I'm going to go document.